All right, so we're going to talk about energy for our review for our test. So the first concept is work. Um, the force has to be in the same direction as the x, the place the way it's moving. So if I have an object and it's moving in this direction and I have a force that's pushing in this direction, remember there are two components of that force. Only this component is doing work. So when we say work equals f x cosine theta they're talking about the fact that this is the theta and this is the component of f that is doing um, work um, if f is perpendicular therefore there's no work right because if i have a force that's pushing like this is perpendicular to x there is no component pushing it in the direction it's moving. So if you are having something going in a circle, right, like this, and you're twirling something around your head, then this is FC, which is pointing inwards, which is always perpendicular to the direction of motion. So FC can never do any work because it's always perpendicular. And if F is opposite to X, then it should be negative work. Uh, if there is a constant velocity then the network is zero. If there's a positive acceleration, then the work is positive. If there's a negative acceleration, then the work is negative. So pay attention to that. Um, if we have something going down an incline like this, so we know this force is Fg and this force is N, um, maybe which force is, is doing positive work or negative work it moves up. So if it's moving up, so then we have an FA pushing it up and then we'd have friction pulling it down, right? So I had to read that it was going up the ramp, right? So then we know because it's moving in that direction, we know that this would be doing positive work. Um, this would be doing negative work. FG would be doing uh, negative work, but only a piece of it, right? Only the piece that is going in this direction is doing the work. And N is doing no work, so zero work, right? And this little component right there is zero work. Um, so pay attention to what it's asking for. Divide things up into components that make sense. Um, you want to make sure that you would put in, like, for this case, you'd want the XY system to be going like this, right? So you have the parallel one going up the ramp, that hopefully makes sense because that's the way it's moving, right? Because we're moving in that direction. Um, so that would make sense if you're on the ramp. If we're going down the ramp, right? So this time we're going down the ramp. Uh, now when we look at it, this is going to be friction. I'm assuming I'm now pushing it down the ramp. I wouldn't have to, but since the picture has it, it would be. Um, and then we have FG and we have N. This is still zero work. No matter what we say, that's going to be zero work because N is perpendicular. Um, friction is always uh, negative work because uh, it's going uh, opposite the way it's moving. FA is positive work still. FG now is doing uh, positive work though, right? Because it's that component. Remember, it's just that component is doing positive work. Yeah, so you should be able to identify positive, negative, break it up into its components if needed, um, and figure out the work done by each item. So like if I knew that the work done, um, so I know that the work done by FG plus the work done by FA would equal the work done by friction if the acceleration is zero, right? If it's not, then one would obviously be bigger and there'd either be positive work or negative work. But um, a lot of times they make it so that it's just going at a constant velocity. Power just remembers energy per time. So that's work per time. Remember, because work changes energy, um, you could put delta Ke, delta MGH. Remember this one too, I always forget to mention it, so I want to put it in here, is that F times V. This is if, if constant velocity, right? So if we're moving at a constant velocity with a force, so you only have something and you push it and it moves in this direction, I can take the F in that direction times the V because the V is equal to X over um, T. And so F X over T, look at that. That's equal to work over time, which is equal to power. So F times V uh, is equal to um, power. Uh, Conservative energy, so remember that kinetic energy and UG are too conservative. That means you can get it back, right? So if I go, if I think of a pendulum, right, and I go back and forth, 
like this. Then I have uh, my UG at the top here should be equal to the UG if it's at the same level. So all I'm looking at is that it's at the same level. I don't care how it gets there. And then my UG is zero down here and my KE is something, but it never gets back down to this level. The K is the same. If I pick another level, like right there, the KE here is equal to the KE here, right? So it's the, and the UG there would be equal to the UG there as well because we're just looking at the height. That is what we mean by conservative energy. You can get it back. It just transfers from one to the other. You should know Ke is one half mv squared. That's pretty simple. And Ug is mgh. Um, and realize that this mg, right, is the force of gravity. So that's just f G H, or you can look at it as F X, which is work because work can cause a change in potential energy, right? Work can cause a change in kinetic energy. That's just what work does. So energy conservation, the idea that if you decrease one, it equals an increase in the other. Just remember there's a negative because one goes up, one goes down. Remember that it doesn't matter the path, right? I think I have that later in here, but it doesn't matter the path. It just matters how much energy do you have in one place, how much energy do you have in the other. Um, but lots of times, this is true, many times one is zero, right? So you start you know, up here, you end up down here. So you set MGH in one half mv squared, you set them equal, mgh equals one half mv squared, and so the m's just cancel, and you can either find h or v. Very important, because lots of times they don't give you mass. Everybody brings mass to the party, we can do it. Even if, even if there's different amounts of energy, right? You could have kinetic energy over here, right? Um, so this would be my initial, and this is my final, because it started moving, right? But the m's will still cancel, right? The equation's a little more complicated, but not that bad. Uh, so whenever we're looking at the energy theorem, we look at the energy we start with and then equals the energy we end up with. This is just non-conservative work. So that could be from a force of some type that's being pushed with it. So it's usually equal to, um, F times X, or I might just say the work put in. This is the kinetic energy it started with, the UG. So for example, if I have a car and maybe it's up here and it's moving at some velocity and it's some height and plus I have an engine that's giving it a force, it would have all three things. Not very often, but that's possible, right? And then the car is going to go down this, this hill, right? And so the car is right here. It's not all the way down. So again, right here, it would have a VF. It would have a uh, HF, right? So you could plug those all in, 1 F MV squared, UG. Maybe there was some friction that was slowing it down. So it went down some distance X. So I could put in the FX. Some of them went to that. Maybe there's air resistance. I don't know. Um, that would be pretty crazy. Usually... When you do these problems, you only have a couple things, like maybe you have work and then it makes it go faster, right? Or maybe it was moving um, and had potential energy and then it just has potential energy, like in a roller coaster or something like that. So you don't have to use all of them, but that is the full equation. The other way you can look at it is this, which sometimes is easier. So this is the work I put in. Right, so that's the work I get in. This is, so that's the work you put in. This is the work um, lost, so to speak. It's not really lost, but you know, it's it, you can't get it back because friction takes away energy, air resistance takes away energy. So this is the energy is taken away. Notice the X, don't subtract an F. Friction is in Newtons, work is in Joules. So you have to make sure it's Fx and Rx. And that could change how much total mechanical energy. Remember, this is also known as total mechanical energy. If you don't have any of this, then these two are just equal, right? Which is what we said before, right? The change in potential energy equals the negative change of kinetic energy. So it would equal the same thing the whole time. Yeah? Hopefully that concept makes sense. Here's the one about path doesn't matter. So we've talked about this quite a few times, but people are still getting it wrong. So I want to make sure we get this right. So as long as you throw this at the same speed and it's the same height above, then the total mechanical energy of this object is the same. So when it gets to the bottom, the V is the same, irregardless of path. It's going to take more time to go up and go down, right? The time will be greater, but the V is the same when it reaches the ground, 
right? Because MGH plus one half MV squared equals MGH plus one half MV squared at any point of the path. It doesn't even matter the mass, right? Because see, all the masses are there. So all the masses, everybody brought mass to the party, mass doesn't matter. It just matters how much height you had and speed. Throw them at different speed, that's a different story. You don't throw it or you drop it, that's a different story. But as long as they have the same mechanical energy, they had the same at the end. So remember when you're doing the problems on the test, talk about energy. Did I say that enough times? Energy. I want to see words about energy, not just about, I plugged it into the equation, right? So when you're explaining your math, talk about the concepts of energy, what we just talked about in this little video. Good luck on the test.